Someone hired me to capture their event. What do I need to know? That is a great question, my completely unrelated little photographer friend. I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about it. Okay, what's going on? It says White Lens Life. I am actually really excited to be here doing this again. It's been a long time. Uh, I don't know why it's been, that's not true. I do know why it's been so long because I've been procrastinating somewhat, but I've also been doing a lot of other work. And then it's so easy when you're doing work to not want to do work for yourself. So that's, I think that was the subject of like my first Lens Live video, like my first and my second one. And here we are again, but it's still true. It's just trying to apply the things to myself. Like, okay, well, still take the time, still make it happen. So here I am, that's what I'm doing. I got a couple people trying to keep me accountable. I appreciate you guys. So what I'm gonna talk about today in a concise way is what do you need to know to cover an event successfully? Let's look at this in three sections, right? The before, the during, the after. What do you do beforehand to make sure that you're prepared for success? Do I have all of my gear? What am I going to use for this shoot? I know that sounds silly, but like, for me, for example, right now, I've loaned out a 50 to somebody and I'm borrowing their 24, uh, 1.4. It's a nice lens. Um, and you wanna make sure that you have the stuff that you want to make sure to cover this thing. Okay, so what am I gonna have? I'm gonna have this body, maybe a backup body. Um, my dad is calling me. It's funny, hey, I wanna let you know right now, you are on the Lens Life with Sess White show. Is there anything you wanna say about event photography? I did not plan that. Okay, you wanna make sure that you have all the gear necessary to cover it in the way that you wanna cover it. Maybe you like a whole lot of wide shots, maybe you like a lot of close shots. Me personally, I like to mix it up. I have a Tamron 70 to 180 and it is, it's nice, I like that a lot. It's like my walk around lens, but I also have the, uh, I think it's like a 28 to 75. I love that thing. So those are the two, if I'm covering an event, that I'm going to have. This guy on, that's, that's on my FX30, um, is the 17 to 28. I also have that in the bag because I like to get a few wides, but I don't primarily focus on that. That's just how I shoot. Now, however you shoot, make sure you have those ready. Make sure that your batteries are good, have an extra. Um, make sure that you've got uh, clean cards and clear lenses. You don't wanna go out into a situation and you're ready to shoot, but guess what? Your card is full. Now what are you gonna do? You're gonna have to sort through stuff that you're like, okay, did I already import this? Do I need to delete it? Do I need to save it? I'm scared, I don't know. You wanna make sure that you've got room on your cars. You wanna make sure that you have batteries, like I said. You wanna make sure that you've got clean lenses. If you're going to be shooting an event for a while, it's helpful to have snacks. It's a bonus, that's a pro tip. Bring something to eat. You may want to have negotiated food into your contract, your agreement, however you set up your booking, um, because Nobody wants a photographer that's fallen out. That's not good for you, it's not good for them. It's a bad look all around. So let's just make sure that you have that meal. Here's the other thing, me personally, I don't like shooting people that are eating anyway. I might do a really big wide, um, like, or two, but uh, not really. Nobody wants that shot, right? So if you're gonna be there throughout a meal, that's something to consider. It's always a good idea to have some snacks something that's not going to melt or be gross by the time that you eat it. If there is something special or specific that you need to know about to be prepared for, make sure that you have already talked with your coordinator about that. Um, it might just be a fair question. Hey, is there is there anything out of the norm that you need me to know? Is there anything very specific that you need me to capture? Maybe there's some action that's happening apart from everything else but you need to be there because they want that moment. So that's something that you wanna coordinate with them. And the very last part of the preparation stage is don't be late. Make sure that you know where and when to be at the place that you need to be. Here in the St. Louis area, there are multiple things that have the same name. There's um, Andrea's or Andre's, I'm sorry, that has different locations. You wanna make sure that you're at the right location for that establishment. You wanna make sure that you're in the right city. Illinois and Missouri, for example, have cities that are named the same. Oh, you meant Mo Fallon, not O'Fallon, Illinois? Okay, see you in about two hours. You know, you don't want that situation to happen. That's not good. So now we're gonna move to the during. What happens during the shoot to make sure that it's successful? You've got all your gear, it's charged, your cards are clear, right? So 
We already said don't be late. Depending on the event, you may want to be 30 minutes early. You may want to be an hour early. I don't know how much setup you need because some people, if you use flashes, you want to set those flashes up ahead of time. If you like using natural light, maybe it's just an outdoor thing, you might not need as much lead time to get there. When I shoot an indoor event, I'll say specifically, I like to shoot flash. Outdoors, maybe. I shoot with a remote system. I'll have my trigger on top and that'll talk to my flashes that are firing wherever. Um, make sure that your flashes are charged. That's part of the charging part ahead of time, but you wanna make sure that those are in place strategically. Maybe you have to move it in the middle, but plan that a little bit ahead. But regardless, make sure that you're not late because if you need to make a switcheroo at the end for whatever reason, you wanna make sure that you've got time to do so. One thing that I will say for sure, you don't want to ever learn anything on the job. You wanna have at least a little bit of experience um, before you do something. You don't want that client gig to be the first time that you're using your remote flashes. You don't want that to be the first time that you're dealing with the trigger and changing the settings. You wanna make sure that you have some familiarity so that when it's time to do the thing, you can just do the thing. A lot of things are planned, but not everything is. Keep your head on a swivel, right? Pay attention to things that are happening. One thing, and this is a little bit funny, it's sort of, it's sort of a me thing, but I like to get photos of people taking photos. I know it sounds dumb, but it's people being in the moment because what do we do? When we see something that's interesting or exciting to us, uh, we like to take a photo of it. We like to get selfies. I love getting people getting selfies of themselves and other people because they're in the moment and that's what we do naturally, right? I enjoy that a lot and I encourage you, keep your head on a swivel. Pay attention to what's happening around you. There's an official list of events and there might even be a shot list, but absolutely get the environment that's happening around you. That's gonna add that extra little bit of, okay, this photographer was there and present and they captured things that we didn't see. I love that. I'm gonna book this person again. We're gonna go assess again because he caught this cool thing. Let that be you. One thing that's super, super helpful, have a consistent white balance. I'm kind of dipping into the after part right now. I edit in Lightroom, and when you take things into that catalog, if you've got a consistent white balance, then for like, for whole sections of your gallery, you'll be able to edit with the same white balance. You'll be able to do the same settings. It makes it a whole lot easier if you don't have to change dramatically from shot to shot. So the less editing you have to do, the faster you'll be able to turn it around and get it to that client. So try to keep that in mind. It makes it so that instead of editing individual photos, you just have to edit sections and scenes. In this room, the white balance and settings were like this, we're, we're, we're right here. And so this pretty much applies to everything that was there. Then we moved outside and this applies to everything that was there, packaged up, put it out and you're good to go. It makes it a lot faster. Okay, this is editor says, I gotta land this plane. What I'm basically trying to say is make sure that it's not changing too much from shot to shot and auto white balance is one of those things that can do it. Auto white can be helpful, but it can also be harmful. If you're at a place that has a lot of different light temperatures and colors in the scene, maybe there's a lot of RGB lights, sometimes that can confuse your auto white balance system. And so it might be easier to set it on one thing rather than changing it for every individual photo. A lot of times I will roll with a Pelican case. Actually, let me grab it. So this is one of my vault cases. I love it. It's a vault Pelican. It is perfect. I love this size. It's a carry-on size and it works really well for me. I'll take that plus I'll take a small bag. I have a Peak Design bag that I really love. It's the perfect size. It's basically a fanny pack, but it's a lens, it's a lens bag. It's a camera bag, right? I'll have my other two lenses that I'm not using because I have my wide, medium, close, basically, right? And I'll have an extra battery in there just in case. So I have my big case that I drop a lot of times near the DJ, but not in a way that looks ugly. It's where my light stand bag is gonna be. But on me, I'll have this small bag to where if I need something real quick, I can pull it out, switch the lens, good to go. Having your go stuff like right there on your person so that you can make a quick switch if needed, that's super valuable. Now we're gonna roll into the after. What do we do when all is said and done, you rocked it, they loved you, you had a good time, and you did what you were there to do. Import things as soon as you can. Don't forget to import your stuff because then you go on another shoot and then another shoot and another shoot, you're further down the line and right back at the beginning when I said clear your cards, you're like, hold on. 
Did I shave this? I don't even know. You don't want to be in that situation. You want to be prepared and ready. As soon as you can, import that stuff. Get it good, put it away, and then you can clear it afterwards. That way you're ready to go for the next gig. Make sure that you've got your stuff saved in a place that you know where it is, you can access it. Before I even start really editing, I like to cut out the stuff that I'm not even gonna have to edit. What that does for you, it takes away some of that overwhelm. You're like, oh, I've got 3,000 photos to edit. First off, don't overshoot. I should have said that in the during. Don't overshoot, get the stuff. Be intentional, because if you overshoot, then by the time you get to your edit or send it to whoever is editing, they will hate you if you overshot. So don't overshoot. When I get in and I cull my stuff down, I cut out the stuff that I'm not going to edit so it can reduce the overwhelm, and then you can kind of move from there. So there are a couple different ways that you can flag and filter in Lightroom. I'm not gonna go in depth, but I will say my very first thing is just a simple yes or no, okay? So I just bang it out. Flag, no. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Cut all, all the things out that's extra. And then from there, out of each section, I'll basically go by, okay, what's the best out of these? And then I'll narrow it down even more. Then I start my edit. What you're doing is simplifying all of that. It makes it easier for your brain, first of all, and then uh, it makes it easier to just push it out to the client. Wow, that was super duper helpful, thanks. Yeah, you are welcome. <laughs> so as far as the direction of Lynn's life, I know that I really want to have more conversational pieces to where um, these are conversations that I'm already having. But it's like, okay, well, how do we repackage that in a way that other people can get it too? So that's one of the things that kind of takes a little bit of the production stress off of myself. It's just like, okay, I'm talking to somebody. I'm going to have this conversation that I've already had with somebody else, a couple people, multiple people. And um, I'm just going to package it in a way that other people can access it too. I hope that's cool. If that's cool, comment down below. Let me know. Make hey, good images. Have fun doing it. Bye. And if you have kids, tell them about our YouTube channel, Epic, Epic RK. With the lens life fam, said what I said, not the gear, it's the man. A woman ready with the camera choice in hand, ready for whatever, shout it out, I can. With the pro or an with the lens life fam, yeah.